Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar of the month. Today, we're going to be talking about how to optimize your website for maximum conversions and sales for interior designers and home remodelers. This is also applicable for anybody in the design industry in residential architecture or construction or any of those as well. But this webinar is all about how to optimize your website so you can get more conversions. OK, so let's start. So the topics that we're going to talk about today is the importance of website conversions, fundamentals of website conversions and ways to improve your conversion rates. So those are the, those are the three things that we're going to specify and talk about on this webinar today. So you want to turn the tide today. Boosting conversions will drive more revenue. Companies have found that when you have a structured approach, you are in the optimization, you are twice as likely to see an increase in sales. And I have a few examples that we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. The importance of website conversions. First, the rising cost of pay-per-click. We have seen online retailers and also in the design industry. PPC or pay-per-click, the cost of generating a lead has gone up a lot. But on the opposite end, conversions have gone down. And we're going to address a lot of that has to do with where you're driving them to, your website or landing page. And we're going to talk about that today. The increase in online competition. There's more competition now online than ever before. So you have to be prepared for that. And you have to stick out from the competition. Shortening consumer attention span. As we all know, the attention span for a lot of people is short, so you have to catch their attention immediately and let them know why they are here and what is the benefit of them being on your website and what the services you have to offer and why they need to get that and why they need to pay more attention. The effects of, of social media. So this has to deal with also tying back into the competition is that you want to differentiate yourself from others out there. And having a unique story helps you to do that. So you want to use social media or other ways, especially the content copy on your website to differentiate yourselves from others, because there's a lot of competition like we just talked about a, a few minutes ago. But differentiating yourself, telling your story that ties back into your product or service helps differentiate you from everybody else. And you do not want to be that designer that does not have a differentiating factor because you do not want to be a me too designer. You want to differentiate yourself from everybody else. And website efficacy. So unlike search engine optimization, which we're going to talk about next month, that can, can, that can take months to show real results, conversion rates can happen instant. And we're going to talk about how. Why does website conversions matter? So this is the example. So this is a client we have scenario one, scenario two. So before we were working with them and we optimized their website, they had 500 visitors, unique visitors per month, not recurring, but unique visitors. So that's how many people would visit their website new per month. They had a 5% conversion rate, which equal to about 25 calls or potential leads. And they have a 20% conversion rate. The Average is anywhere between 20 and 30 percent. That's the average. So that would turn into five book projects on average at a seventy five hundred dollar average transaction value that equals thirty seven thousand five hundred monthly revenue. Just on that one example, this is before we optimize the site. So scenario two, the same five hundred unique visitors a month. At a 15% conversion rate, which actually tripled. So you had 75 calls at the same 20% conversion rate. Now you have 15 booked projects. Okay. So that turned from, uh, and you still have your 7,500 average transactional value. Now they are making 112,500 monthly revenue. So you can see just by changing the conversion rate, how you can increase your sales, how you can increase the overall sales in your company without doing anything extra, without adding any SEO, social media, PPC, or anything like that. Just focusing on conversions on your website. 
That's what we're going to talk about today. Where you want to start is the website fundamentals. We see a lot of design websites that do not have a lot of these elements on their website. And at the basic level, at the foundation level, you need to have these elements. You need to have your primary contact details somewhere at the top. You want to have a clickable number because you remember over 80 to 90 percent of search starts on a mobile device. So if they see if a if a prospect or a consumer sees what they like and they are interested, they can actually click on your number. A lot of the times designers have their numbers in the footer, but that's just making it harder for the prospect to find you and connect with you. You want to make it as easy as possible. Having a number at the top that's clickable makes it easy for them to reach out to you, reach out to you, click and contact you. Company name and logo. So having that someplace at the top so they know where they are, what the logo is, main navigation, so that's the tabs. Okay, so where you have the about us, projects, portfolio, contact, services, whatever that is, you want to have that easily recognizable. Authentic images, you want to have images of you, your team, and your projects. Clear description. This can be a sentence or a statement that's saying that lets prospects or potential clients know why are they here. So they know immediately, I'm here because you do design, you do Mediterranean design, you do modern design, whatever that is. You have that someplace clearly stated in the above the fold area. And the above the fold area is right when you go onto a website, what you look at before you have to scroll. So above the fold area, you want to have a lot of these elements. A call to action, whether you want them to join a newsletter, contact you for more information, do a free consultation, whatever it is, you want to have that call to action right there on the front. Social media links so they can reach out to you on any of the other platforms and your site needs to be mobile optimized. Remember, I just said over 80, 90 percent of a, of a search starts on a mobile device. So more than likely, your prospects or your potential clients are going to look at you first on your mobile device. And if it does not look right, they're going to ease it. They're, they're going to bounce off and head to the competition. So when you're doing either a rep, uh, website redesign or doing your website for the first time, make sure you optimize for, for mobile device first, then the desktop, because search starts on the mobile device first. These are some of the elements or the ways that you can improve your website for conversions. Number one is adding a pop-up. So according to a study by Sumo, the average conversion rate for all pop-ups is 3.09%. However, if it's done right, that can go up to 10%. Okay, so what we mean by done right, you want to try different offers. You want to have PDFs. You want to have premium content, different products, free offers. You want to have all that on, on the website. When you have a pop-up, one of the main things we hear is it could be annoying. So one of the ways to avoid that is you can trigger the pop-up to happen. Either you can have a delay of like around 30 seconds or when they scroll down the page, you can have that pop-up happen at that time. But you want to try to avoid to have a pop-up happening immediately after you jump on a website. A lot of websites have pop-up blockers, so you just want to make sure you don't have it immediately. You want to have some type of delay. You want to make it easy to close a pop-up. I can't tell you how many websites I see that when uh, the pop-up comes, you know you have no idea how to exit out of it or to get out of the pop-up if you do not want to see it. That is a cause for having them leave your website and head someplace else. Make sure if you have the pop-up and you use this element, that it's easy to find and it's easy to close. And you want to also set some type of cookie on the pop-up. So returning visitors don't have to see have to see that same pop-up every time. Once they've seen it once, nine times out of 10, is that's all they need to see. And if they want to go back to it, you can have a way for it to be either in the lower right, lower left, or you can have it in the contact us or someplace else on your site for them to get to. But for returning visitors, that's one way to, the, to annoy them if you have it pop up every single time, okay? Next, you want to remove distractions. One of the elements are I, I hear from a lot of designers is that PPC pay-per-click does not work, and they say they are not getting the conversions that they want, and one of the reasons why is because they 
do not have an optimized landing page or their website where they're driving the traffic is overwhelming. So whenever you do ads of any kind, whether that be Facebook ads, Google ads, Instagram ads, wherever they click on and you're driving them to, you want to remove distractions. So if you're talking about a remodel of either a kitchen, a bath, you do not want to have all everything else that you do. You Nine times out of 10, you do not want to send a prospect to your homepage because your homepage is going to be an overview of everything. That'll be an overview of who you are, where you are, what you do, services you offer, yada, yada, yada. That'll be overwhelming. You want to either create a landing page or you want to send them to a, a specific page on your website that addresses the ad that you have out there. So, for example, this is the ideal landing page. So you want to have a catchy headline. So remember, tying into whatever the ad says. So whatever the ad, if you're doing AdWords or Instagram ads, Facebook ads, whatever you have in the ad saying, you know, remodel for a kitchen, path, doing a deck design, whatever that is, that's the catchy headline that you want to have at the top. So remind them why are they there. Secondary headline, that's just uh, more information to reiterate why are they there. And so you're reinforcing them. This is why they are on your site. You want to have links, only links that are that relate to what the ad is. Because remember, when you have that ad, the ad, you want to have the page or where you send them to relevant to what the ad is about. So if you have links that are relevant to what is being talked about, have them on there. But if not, don't have any links because you want to have a, a, a page or a landing page that is decluttered as possible. You want to have it straight to the point compelling content. So the content should relate back to the purpose of the ad. The CTA needs to be there, easy to find. Some type of trust symbols. So those are, if you um, are in an organization, you want to have that because that builds trust, AI, ASID, NABA, NARI, NARI, or if you have any of that builds trust that used to be the BBB, Better Business Bureau. Now that's not as vital as it once was, but the local and national organizations that you're a part of, they are. Okay. Testimonials, you want to have testimonials on the page that, that talk about the service or the product that you're promoting, not just generally, but it because remember, this landing page needs to tie directly back to the ad. Uh, you can have a location map if, if this is all local. And if you and if anything is happening in the local area, area, if it's national, you don't have to worry about that. And if you need any additional content and then with the image or the video, I left that for last. You want to make sure that the image or video is clear, easy to click on. It's not a long video. If you have a video that is to the point and it all relates back to the ad, whatever that may be. So we actually have a article on our site where we outline what you need to have on this page and we get more into specifics on each of these items. OK. Add a third party sign up service. So this is when you head to a website, a lot of the times when you ask for information, when you have ETA to call to action. A lot of the time they'll ask you if you want to sign up with your email or with Facebook or with Gmail, because that automatically populates the information. OK, this this is some this is a tool here you can use. There's others out there. This is not the only one, but you want to use uh, tools that allow you to automatically populate their information, because the easier you make it for people to leave their information, the more likely they are to leave their information. OK, so if you're asking for a lot of information beyond the normal of the name, email, possibly the number. But if you're asking for more information, these auto populated services help you to auto populate so they don't have to input information because that'll also drive them away. as well. Strengthen your CTA, your call action. What is normal is sign up, click here, start trial. You want to actually play with that. You want to actually make sure that you have ETAs that relate back to the service or the offering that you are doing. So 
play with the CTA, do some A-B testing there. And there are tools like Crazy Egg that helps you with the CTA. And it also helps you with heat maps. So what heat maps are, it looks at your website and it tells you where are the majority of the people clicking on your website. So the darker it is, that's where more people are clicking. That's where they're spending more of their time. So that tells you. So now you're able to analyze the website. So if they're spending more time over here than on this other side of the site or on this other page, I may need to optimize that. Or what is happening that is drawing them to that page? What are they clicking on? What are they looking at? So you may want to spread that out through different pages or add that in your CTA to make more conversions happen. A-B testing, I had just talked about that. So you want to A-B test your headlines. Would you have the CTAs like we had just talked about? Will you have to submit mid here or click here or whatever? You want to test that. One of the stats we found here was from Copy Blogger. On average, eight out of 10 people read the headline copy, but only two out of 10 actually read the rest. So what that's telling you is that the headline is vital. Okay, You have to get the headline and what is being said there right. What happens is that when you're testing the headline, you're seeing what are the ideal areas and what is working and what's not working. So these are a few of the things you want to look out for. You want to look out for the length, the tone, the stats, use of the stats that are happening, and then use of numbers. OK, so these are a few sites that you can use for free. We actually use Headline Analyzer a lot. That's one of the tools we use. But what you want to do at a minimum is use one of the tools just to look at your copy, look at your headline to make sure that the headlines that you are using are relevant back to the service or the product that you are trying to promote. And that is effective because a lot of these tools here, they have best practices. So you want to use them just as a baseline. And Remember, a lot of these tools are not industry specific, so they are not designer specific, but you want to use it in terms of general best practices, but then use your own design knowledge to help. OK, so this is what it suggests. But based on the terminology in the design field, I may want to use X, Y, Z terms or X, Y, Z words to optimize and really have that headline stick out and get people to read the rest of the copy because like I just read, eight out of 10 read the headline, but only two out of 10 actually read beyond that. So make sure that your headline is catchy and that uh, drive them to read the rest of what you have to offer. So leveraging social proof. This is another. What I do not see a lot of, especially on design websites, is social proof or testimonials from clients or if they have testimonials, they're years old. And a lot of the time that's not relevant for today. Make sure that you are getting testimonials from clients. The best time to get a testimonial from a client, especially in the design field, especially when you're doing a remodel, is right after the big reveal. That's when everybody is happy, excited. They're, they just see uh, what happened before. Now they have their new, great, dynamic space aesthetically pleasing and everything. This is what they were asking for. They're happy with what you did. That's the best time to ask them for a testimony. If you can do and if they are comfortable with being on video, a video testimonial by far is the best testimonial you can get. Written is great, but if you could get a video testimonial, that outweighs everything else. Some of the tools that, that are out there to help you get testimonial, you have Bird Eye Review Us, and we actually have a proprietary one of our own. If you're interested in that, let me know, and I'll be happy to let you know that what that is. But what a lot of these tools do is they actively look at your contact list and reach out to contacts on your behalf, get them to review on the sites that where you are, whether that's on your website, Facebook, Instagram, Google, Hiles, any of those sites where you want the majority of your views is already tied to. So it's a direct link because you want to make it as easy as possible for people to leave reviews. The harder you make it, the less likely you're going to get reviews. And the point of a lot of these services is that it reminds them. Because like I said, the best time to get a review is at the big reveal. 
But oftentimes what happens is that they're happy and they're excited and they're going to, yes, I'm going to do the review or the testimonial, reach back out to me tomorrow or reach back out to me next week. Next week happens, they're busy, hard to catch up with. Now you're having to track them down. And now you're having to play follow up, which for business owners is hard to do because you got your own work to do. Now you're trying to tr track down one of your past clients for a testimonial. That's why a lot of these tools help because it executes that automation on your behalf. So it's constantly following up with them on your pre described time for you, for you to actually follow up with them so you can get that review. So that's the purpose of a review tracking system is to get the review. And also, if you get bad reviews, it lets you know, because a lot of the best systems out there, these are a few. And like I said, we actually have a proprietary one of our own. If you'll have in there, if you have a five star or a four star review, it'll automatically allow you to leave the review. If you get a three star, two star, one star review, it'll send them to an email to email you what the issue is. So hopefully they will not leave that bad review that you could talk to them and resolve it before it becomes an issue, then you could turn that bad review into a good review. But regardless of if you use a system, a platform, or do it on your own, reviews are vital for helping with conversions. And when you get reviews or testimonials, reply immediately. You want to try to reply within 24 to 48 hours. If you get a negative review, you want to, those are the main reviews you want to reply to. We actually had a podcast on this and we had talked about this, that negative reviews, answering negative reviews professionally helps you because others are able to see how you answered that negative review. And a lot of times you may be able to turn that negative review into a positive review. And I've seen clients that have received other clients based on how they handled that negative review. So make sure whatever type of reviews or testimonials you get, whether you use a, a platform we have here, ours, or you do it on your own, that you are actively getting new current testimonials and you're replying to them on a consistent basis. All right. Site speed. This is one of the ranking factors for the search engines. If your site loads slow, it will hurt you in the rankings. Make sure that the user experience is optimized. And the first start of that is when a prospect or a potential client comes to your website and it's loading slow. That is an immediate turnoff because remember our attention span, we had talked about this earlier, attention span is, is small. If you do not have a fast loading site or if your site takes forever to load, that's going to cause them to bounce, go to the competition to another website. Here are a few tools. GT Metrics is one we like to use a lot. These are all free tools. You could put your website in there and it'll tell you what the speed of it is and it'll hand you a score from A to F. Obviously, A is excellent, F is bad, but it'll hand you a score and it'll let you know how fast your site goes, what's the optimum level, and then what are the issues that you need to correct. A lot of times what I see on the design side is the images or the videos, is they have great imagery that they want to showcase their projects for the before and after, and they use the high quality professional photography that are 16, 20 megabytes, and you have a lot of those on your site, especially on the portfolio page, it slows the website down. There are sites that you can use like tiny JPG, tiny PNG, and those sites where it holds on to the image quality, but it, it decreases the size. Because like I said, a lot of times with designers' websites, imagery and videos is what bogs the website down. So you want to make sure that you have good site speed. Using a live chat feature. So this is one of the best ways that we've seen to get better conversions on your website with a chat bot. That's basically what that is, a chat bot. So you've been to websites and you see in the lower right-hand area, you'll see a chat where if any of your potential clients or prospects have a question they can ask. By having a chat bot, it helps to let potential buyers, consumers, or customers or clients know what they are looking for and answer any questions that they may have once they are on your website. 
So you want to have the context and timing. You want to have the information. If you use a chat bot, you want to have you want to spend time setting up all potential answers. So you want to do all the typical questions and answers that you are asked. And so you want to have all those potential answers out there. So you want to have answers to those questions or have information or have links where they can get more information from that. Whatever your offering is, you want to make sure that the offer or the service or the product is in that chat box being answered. And you want to have and, and you want to have the design tied into your branding into your logo, your color scheme and all. So having a chat bot is the basic that you should have. And there's there's a lot of them out there. And, you know, it all depends on how much you want to spend on, on how sophisticated they are. But having a chat bot helps because your employees are not active 24-7. The chat bot can be active 24-7. Now, one of, of the things we offer is we offer a live chat bot. And this is something that we started to offer about Right at the beginning of the year, we had we had started offering this and we did a lot of A-B testing on our own client sites. And what we've seen, the conversion rate skyrocket because the chat bot is great, but having a live agent there 24-7 to actually answer the questions and get all your questions answered works. We've actually tested this last year on some of our own clients and we've seen the conversion rates. As you saw, the, the example I gave at the start. We had a client that had 500 unique visitors a month and had a 5% conversion rate. And with their typical transaction value of 7,500, that was around 3,700 a month. But by adding in some of these uh, elements and especially the live chat bot, we seen that one client with the same amount of unique visitors of 500 a month increase their conversion rates to 15% over 5%. So at the same closing rate of 20%, that went up to 112,000 a month just by having a lot of these elements and especially the live chat box. Because now you have somebody on your site 24-7 when you're asleep or when you're working on a project or your team is doing something else. You have somebody on your website answering questions for prospects about your services, your products, what you do, where you are and all of that. So having some type of chat bot. Now, like I said, we have the live chat bot. And if you want to learn more about this, reach out to us. Like I said, we're using this on our own clients. They're having amazing results. But if you do not want the live chat bot, at a minimum, you want to have the basic chat bot where you have to do all of the potential answers based on the questions. Okay. So that was just an overview of what you can do and what you should do to actually optimize your website for conversions. Okay, so you can see just by optimizing your website, what can happen from it. So that's why I say reach out to us. I know we went over a lot today, but feel free to reach out to us because we're here to help. Whether you work with us or not, we're here to help. We love talking to designers. We work with designers all the time. So we know the language. We know how to speak your language and convey to the end user, your unique selling proposition, your USP. Go to our website because we have a resource library, which has a lot of training, a lot of free training videos, a lot of these webinars. So you can find a lot of information on our resource library to help you grow your business now. So whether you work with us or not, we have information that can help you grow now. If this is overwhelming and you need help, reach out to us. We'll love to talk to you and hear from you. Next month, we're going to talk about SEO. We wanted to start with website, your foundation. This is your foundation, the website, making sure you have your site optimized because you don't want to drive traffic to a website that's not optimized. So you want to start with your foundation. This is your foundation, the website. Make sure it's optimized right, correctly. Now, when you drive traffic, you have a higher rate of converting that traffic. So we had talked today about how to optimize your website for conversions. Next month, we're going to talk about search engine optimization, how to drive traffic to your website. We hope to see you all here next month and you have a great day. All right. Bye-bye.